All right, hello and welcome to my, I think it's fourth or fifth, fifth actually, yeah, part of my Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial. And today we are going to be covering sort of attacking, sort of. I'll just show you what I've done so far, basically, and weapon throwing we've got in here as well. So basically we've got guns, they fire bullets now, and you can just kill people with gore. And you can throw guns, uh, you can throw weapons, so that and knock people over, and then eventually they'll get back up, and then you can just shoot them. Yeah, so I'm gonna be doing that. But first, uh, yeah, you can throw that as well. Uh, just by stop at objects. Uh, okay, so that's that. First thing, I need to cover a few uh, little bugs that were in the uh, last one that I fixed. Uh, no. Well, two of them are bugs. One of them is just a like little extra thing I added for to, to, for the game to be able to differentiate between two-handed and one-handed weapons just for the bullet spawning, which I'll get into in a minute. So basically, on the weapon pickup, I've added a new boolean called one-handed, which, if it's true, it'll be like a one-handed weapon like the Mac 10 we got in the game, or maybe a shotgun is two-handed, or whatever. And so basically, that works for weapon attack. Yeah, so that basically just says where the bullet spawns, it's not that big. Uh, animation check, why animate? Basically, uh, when I found picking up weapons, there was like a little, the animation, the sprite wouldn't change, so even if you drop the weapon, it'd still look like you had the weapon in your hand until you walked for a frame, then it reset. Basically, I've added a, a check here, like it just resets the torso sprite to the walking original, so when the sprite gets changed and stuff. So yeah, there's a reset sprite for when you've dropped the weapon, there's no weapon to pick up. So yeah, I hope that made sense because it didn't in my head. Uh, reset sprite's done. And there's also an animation check, which was different to that, but uh, let's see. Basically, whenever it's reset, like uh, on, I think, weapon attack, we had basically when yeah, I don't even know if I've said this. All right, never mind. I'll just go through the weapon pack. All right. Uh, no, oh, God. Uh, I'm just trying to struggle for which to talk about first. Right. I'm just going to show you the prefabs I've made first out of sprites. So basically, it's the bullet. It's got a bullet script and blood splash and bullet impacts for when it hits stuff. Uh, there's basically just prefabs using the animation script that I made a couple of parts ago for just animating stuff. And then they destroy it whatever. See, it was useful, I told you. And I'll just show you the bullet script now. So basically, a bullet will be created here and it will have its direction set. So basically, it's just going right because uh, sprites will either rotate its face up or right where well, they should be, anyway. And then, so basically, that just knows to go right from the player and it'll set the creator to player. So it knows that the player's the one that's created it, kind of obviously. But yeah, that's basically just to differentiate between enemy and player bullets. So yeah, on the bullet script itself, it's got direction, creator, it gets the enemy attack script, which I'll go into later. Of the so basically, uh, which I'll go into uh, when I get to it, really. And it has a timer, which just basically counts down and basically 20 seconds, if it's not hit anything, it'll just destroy itself just to keep memory from getting clogged up. That's a bit too long actually, I'm gonna change it to 10. But yeah, you know, whatever. You could also do it by distance, maybe if it went 20 units away from the player and not hit anything, you can destroy it, but whatever. So basically we've got a constructor which the weapon attack uses when it's adding, creating the bullet to set the direction and whatnot. And basically it moves in the direction by a time dot delta time so it's in sync with the frame rate and doesn't go really fast or slow or whatever and it on collision detection if it hits a game object that's got a collider and it's tags enemy it'll get the enemy attack script and then kill them well it just says kill them by the bullets and so it'll, that selects which like sprite the uh, corpse sprite to use and stuff is I'll explain it later in the when I'm going over that. Uh creates a blood impact, which is basically just a blood splatter, and destroys the bullet. And if it hasn't if it's just hit anything with a collider, 
without a type that's been specified. So I'll have to do one for player as well, if the creator's player. And it'll just create a wall impact, which is like a little grey spark thingy, and then destroys itself. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to enemy attacks, which is on these game objects. So Yeah, so you can just see there, it's got the sprites set up for it, and it's got a collider and a rigid body and whatnot. So, it's got this four, basically, I'm keeping the sprites here for now. Even though, oh well, I think it'll probably be easier to keep the sprites stored here locally rather than having them in the uh, sprite container for now. Whatever. Uh, we've got the blood pool that, you know, there's like, when you kill an enemy, a blood pool sort of animates behind the corpse. That's that. Uh, blood spurt, as you saw, just like spurt blood. Uh, enemy knocked down. Basically, that is just a check to see. If you've like punched the enemy or hit him with a thrown weapon, then that will like make it so it calls the knockdown script. So they'll it'll like be disabled. It'll stop them for three seconds. I've not got executions in yet. That'll be another thing to do. Uh, so basically, it just disables the collider, sets the sprites to knock down, knocked down. It'll disable the AI once I've implemented that. And once the timer is less than or equal to zero, it'll get back up and re enable the AI and whatnot. Uh, basically, it's also got two different killing types. So, if you got kill bullet, so basically, it just uh, it just changes it up a bit. So, the diff main difference between the two is that it changes the sprite that gets given to the corpse, so stabbed, so that it does uh, if you stab him a blood spurt is created and the other two is like this, what it has in common is just creates a blood pool saves glider and changes the tag to dead that's about it and we've got tags for dead and enemy you know how, you should know how to do tags if not it is literally just add tag and then you just press the button and add new tag literally it uh yeah what have we got? We've got to go over the weapon attack. From weapon attack, yeah. Alright, so... I don't know if... I'll just go over this again, just... Because you, I think you've seen it, like... It was... Uh, on the, When it gets the left mouse button down, and it's, like, the timer is equal to zero, it'll attack, and then... If it's a gun, which is set when you pick up the weapon, you'll create the bullet, and if it's one-handed, it'll decide where, and it'll set all the... Uh, It'll set the direction here and the creator. And then it sets it to the timer reset. So it'll just have to, it counts down here and will only allow you to spawn a bullet or attack once the timer's less than zero again. Just to make it so that you're, like, you've not got an infinite stream of bullets or whatever. And so, like, simulate fire rate and that. Uh, what else? So we've got the melee attack here, which. All right, uh, yeah, it's still got the draw right, so I'll show you how that works. Basically, on melee attacks, I'll have to move it actually there to show you. All right, you see how there's a, a green line appearing? That's basically how melee attacks are detected. It's basically just forward out from the player. Uh, yeah, uh, basically. Uh, it's like a, a line that gets drawn, and if it hits anything, I've changed the player collider so it can't hit it. So basically, if it's if the if this ray caster that it draws, it goes out like a unit in front of the player in the forward direction or right in this case, but whatever, because of how the sprites work. And then basically, it checks if the current weapon, if you've not got a weapon. And it's hitting at the collider's hit an enemy while you're attacking, and this only appears while you're attacking. Then it'll knock the enemy down that it's hit. Else, if if the collider's not if it's hit something and it's an enemy, and you have a weapon, it'll do a melee kill. So I'll just demonstrate that again. Uh, yeah, so melee kill, knockout. That's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, and now for the dropping weapons, which I've still got to cover. Alright, basically, so it checks if the if you've got a weapon, 
basically. If you haven't, it'll just do nothing. There was an error. I know it might seem a bit unnecessary to put that in, but it was complaining at me and created an error message when I didn't have it. So it's there to stop an error message, which is always good. Basically, it'll get the position of the mouse and basically just move the weapon to there. Adds the component script for a weapon to it, which I'll go over. And then we'll just set the... Basically, when the uh, when the weapons are on the ground as pickups, their rigid body is kinematic. So kinematic means if it's true, it's not affected by physics. But if it's not, it is. So it's saying that the rigid body of the weapon can be affected by physics, and it sets the direction to go in as the direction from the player to the mouse position. So like throwing it, and it'll just set the rotation to the rotation of the player. And it sets the object to true, and it'll just reset the sprites as well. So it that bug where you still appear to hold the weapon even after you've thrown it doesn't occur. So on the thrown weapon script, it'll basically just add force to the weapon in the direction times 40 just to give it a bit of oomph. And it'll just rotate the weapon to make it look like it's spinning in the air. And then it has a timer that counts down for two seconds. And then if it's uh, when it reaches zero, it'll just stop. So it'll make the rigid body of the weapon kinematic again. So it's affected by phys It's not affected by physics. And then it'll just stop. So it doesn't fuck off everywhere, anywhere. And you lose the weapon because that'd be annoying. And yeah, uh, it'll destroy the player. Not destroy the player, sorry, it'll destroy this script on it, and then if you pick it up and throw it again, it'll get re added with a different force and whatnot. Uh, that's just for setting the direction when it's, whenever you make it or add it. Uh, and then it's got a trigger on it which checks if it's collided with an enemy, it'll just knock down the enemy and set the Bridge your body to being kinematic so it stops moving and it doesn't have anything for player. It just doesn't have anything for player so it can still move because there was a bug where you'd, it, you'd throw it and then it stops instantly because it's hit the player so you just have to have that in order to stop it hitting the stop it stopping when it hits the player or when you spawned it. Spawned it, thrown it, that's the one. Sorry, I'm not good with words. I should prepare more for these. Uh, and then basically, this is just a uh, and also, like, if it hits an inanimate object or a wall or whatnot, it'll stop. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Not of covered. It's not been a good day today. Well, because I'm tired and skip uni and sleepy. But I had to play Super Hot, which is very short but good. I need to play the endless mode, though. Yep, so it stops when it hits inanimate objects. And you can see the bullet effects and stuff. Around there. There. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, play my game loud or quiet. It is uh, there's a link in the description below. It's sort of like this, and actually doing stuff like this has given me. I'm gonna re-implement the weapon system in it at some point. <coughs> I've just been working on story ideas for where I want to go with it. And yeah, uh, what else? Yeah, so go play that, because this has been a good learning experience for me, and hopefully for you as well. So, cheers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I will see you in the next part where we will be doing, who knows, maybe AI. Actually, I probably need to get wall sprites first, but oh well. Bye!